Uh, in this video, I've taken some of my viewers' advice. Had an old friend of mine that uh, was also in the business over for a visit today, and uh, I said, "Hey, listen, I'm doing this series. I'll get you to do something to this TV, and uh, we'll film me fixing it." So he spent about 10 minutes with it and he gives it back to me. I have no idea what he's done, but this is what our symptom is now. TV's turned on and it's dead. I have no high voltage, I have no sound, I have no picture. If I turn up the screen control on the back of the tube, I have nothing. So, let's dig into it and see what's wrong with it. So the first thing we need to do is I need to determine, because we know that the set's not working, I'm going to have to look at the power supply and make sure that I've got voltage on my power supply here. I'm going to go to the power supply here. So my raw B plus is 185 volts. I'm going to go to the regulator here. This is the regulator up here. The regulator on the base it's 100 and, uh, 170, 184, and we've got 171 on the emitter. So the regulator's not regulating, but that be, would be expected because the set's not powering up. The first thing I need to do is I need to determine whether we've got horizontal output, which I don't hear anything running. I don't see any filaments lighting up. I have to assume that the horizontal output is not working, but I'm not going to put my meter onto the collector because if it was running, I'd have about 900 volts peak to peak and the maximum that my meter can handle safely is 600 volts. If I go over 600 volts I'm going to blow the spark gap in my meter and then my meter is going to be shot. So I'm going to go back one stage I'm going to go back to the horizontal drive transformer which is down here and it is fed with 170 volts. I've got 170 volts to 101 volts because it goes through a resistor R416 that's a dropping resistor for the horizontal drive transformer and my horizontal drive transformer has got 99 volts on one side so I think maybe the oscillator is probably running but we'll check it with the scope because if it wasn't running I'd have the same voltage right if I if the oscillator wasn't going at all and I checked the primary side I've got 101 volts on one side and I got 99 on the other so I think probably the oscillator is going because there is a voltage drop across there we can prove that pretty quick by hooking up a scope and we'll scope the collector And sure enough, we have drive. That's our horizontal drive. So every time this pulses up and down, it's a square wave. It's supposed to be a square wave. This little kick is from induction in the primary of the horizontal drive transformer. But every time that transitions, we should have a pulse. This should be one horizontal line. So we know that the, the oscillator is running. So if we go to the secondary side of the, uh, of the transformer, which is here, I think that's it. We look at it and we see that we do have a drive signal. Now this drive signal is going to the base of the horizontal output transistor. So if we go up to the horizontal output transistor, we'll see that we have the same signal. Therefore, the set should be running, but it's not. Now we could have a bad horizontal output transistor, but typically when they fail, they're going to short. And when they short, they're going to blow the fuse because it's going to dump, the entire B plus is going to dump through that transistor. It's going to overload the power supply and blow the fuse or burn out one of the, uh, burn out a resistor. If I go to the collector, I see that I've got the same thing. So this is the signal that's actually making it through the transistor from the base drive. Therefore, I know that I've got no voltage on there. Now I can put my meter on and I can measure the voltage. So I've measured it with my scope. I know there's no dangerous voltage there because my scope can handle 1,000 volts easy, easy with a times 10 probe. I put my meter on there and I've got no, I've got like negative 0.3 volts. That goes back to the flyback transformer. 
Maybe I'll move the meter over here so you guys can, can zoom this thing in a bit and you guys can see a little more what I'm doing. If I put the meter on the other side over here. Well, that doesn't work. You can't read it. Okay, now you can read it. So I go back to the flyback transformer. I, I, I don't have a schematic for this set, but I know that flyback transformers, the way that they're constructed is typically you have your primary on one side and your secondary windings where your low voltages are generated for the rest of the set on the other side. So if my collector here goes in through here, through this pin, there's zero volts. There's zero volts here and there's zero volts here. These are going to be the, tied to the primary side, I'm pretty sure. Um, this goes down through, this is probably the input here, goes down through this coil and there's a resistor across this coil that's going to be to dampen out any uh, ripple and there's another resistor here and I got 0.35 volts and the other side of this resistor I have 170 so that resistor is open or in this case that resistor has been disconnected because that's what my pal did he's gone in and disconnected a resistor to kill my B plus to the set. So let's go in and resolder or replace. I don't think he put a bad resistor in. I'm sure he just disconnected the thing. Did what did what any good electronics instructor would do, and that's that's what our instructors used to do when I was uh, in in college. There, when I was taking electronics, was they would put faults and they would disconnect things. They would cut wires and so forth. Yeah, it's not. It, it, it's actually not pulled. The resistor isn't pulled. It's it's in the board. I think all he did was he just disconnected the thing and just he's got it sitting in the hole. So I can't just look at it and see that it's that it's out. But it's this one right here. It's this one right in there. It's a little red resistor here. I'm just gonna heat up the bottom. put it back through and now I'll play dumb because I know that that's going to fix it but we're going to put the scope back on it and do this the right way we're going to look and see whether we've got our horizontal drive back our horizontal output back so I'm going to hook the scope back up and in this case I'm going to I'm going to take it down to like all the way down to a thousand volts and hook my scope back up to the horizontal output transistor and turn the set on and there's my there's my thousand volt peak thousand volts peak to peak or about 900 and something volts peak to peak so we've got the horizontal drive back and that has fixed this fault let's take a look at the picture unplug it while I And have all the board. Plug it back in. And we have a picture. So remember that if you're troubleshooting horizontal section, if you have if your TV is dead completely and you've got no uh, picture whatsoever. The first thing you need to do is determine if your horizontal um, output is working. You don't measure that with your meter directly because if it is running, because there are other reasons why you may not have a picture, you may have no vertical and it's muting the, the screen because some televisions when the vertical is lost, you'll just have a white line across the middle of the screen, which is the dead giveaway. Other sets, when there's loss of vertical drive, the picture gets muted because that line will burn a permanent burn in a tube in no time if it's left to run. So some sets will actually blank the picture if it loses horizontal drive. Wonderful tube there. Right? Look at that nice burn in. You can actually see the time from when this thing was used as a security monitor. You can read the date and the time on that screen. That's why this is my guinea pig set because it's a TV that if something gets you know we 
break the picture tube or something working on it, I'm not going to shed any tears. It works. It's a good one to learn with, but the tube has been etched pretty bad. I got another one that's actually worse, a 20 inch. Should bring that down and do some, do some fault troubleshooting on that because you think the burn-in is bad on this. You should see the burn-in on the other one. It is, it's 10 times worse than this one. Um, okay, that's, um, that's how to troubleshoot the horizontal section. Again, when you're troubleshooting horizontal, you want to make sure you, use, you need a scope if you're going to measure the output for sure. But you can measure the drive transformer, make sure that there's voltage to the drive, make sure the drive signal's there. Uh, if the drive signal's not there, then you got to look in the drive circuitry. Um, quite often, if the drive transformer comes unsoldered and you lose horizontal drive while the set is running, it will cause destruction of the horizontal output transistor. So the drive transformer should always be inspected to make sure that the solder connections aren't broken on that because that was a real common problem. You'd uh, break The solder connections would break on the horizontal drive transformer and that would ultimately cause the output transistor to short and uh, then you'd end up with a dead set. Anyway. This one here, we lost our B plus supply to the input of the primary for the flyback. That's a fusible resistor that's in there. It's one that's designed that if the flyback transformer were to start drawing too much power, uh, not enough power to blow the fuse, but enough power to draw too much current, it would cause that resistor to go open. So that fault that my friend put in is a real world fault and I've seen it before on sets like this. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see this set again. I gotta get a hold of my friend again and say, come on back, plant another fault. Maybe next time he'll plant two faults for me. And uh, actually there is a fault on this TV as well right now that I just discovered. The sound is weak. So maybe we'll actually troubleshoot that because right now the volume is cranked up all the way, but I don't hear any sound. And that's a legitimate problem on this set. So. Maybe the next video, before my pal comes out and plants another fault, we'll figure out what's wrong with the sound on this set. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.